In our unit on reproduction and inheritance, we've studied how cells divide to make more cells and patterns in how they pass along their genes to new offspring. In this video, we're going to take a look at the nature of the gene itself. Genes are made up of a molecule called nucleic acids, specifically DNA, although there's another type of nucleic acid known as RNA. In this video, we'll look at the structure of both of these nucleic acids, and we'll see why their structure makes them really good at their job, which is to store and transmit genetic information. Let's start with an overview of what all nucleic acids have in common. Nucleic acids are polymers, and they are made of smaller units known as nucleotides. You can see that a nucleotide itself is made up of smaller units. A nucleotide consists of a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogenous base. All three of these together is a single nucleotide, and then a polynucleotide is many of these bonded together. Now let's take a look at DNA structure in particular. Everyone knows that DNA is a double helix. What that really means is it's a ladder wound up. Now if we straighten out the ladder, we can see some interesting patterns in the structure of DNA. First of all, there's the phosphate. There's the sugar, which in DNA is deoxyribose. That's where the D comes from. And then we can see the nitrogenous bases. So in this diagram, here is a single nucleotide. But the nucleotides are bonded together to form a much more complex double helix structure. If you think of this double helix as a ladder, the sugars and the phosphates are like the sides of the ladder, and the bases are the rungs of the ladder. The sugars and the phosphates are held together by very strong covalent bonds, and that's important because we need a stable molecule to carry our genetic information. The bases, however, are held together by weak hydrogen bonds, and that's indicated by these little dotted lines. It's important that these bonds are weak because we do need to be able to take DNA apart easily if we want to copy it. Something else to note is that there's four different types of bases in DNA. C, G, A, and T. A and T always bond together, they're complementary. C and G bond together, they're complementary. The structure of C and G enables three hydrogen bonds, whereas the structure of A and T enables only two hydrogen bonds. So A and T are a little bit easier to tear apart than C and G are. Another interesting thing about DNA is that it's anti-parallel. What that means is that one end of the ladder looks different than the other end of the ladder. One end of the ladder has a phosphate, whereas on the opposite side, we've got a sugar. And then if we follow the ladder down, we'll see that this side ends in a sugar and this side ends in a phosphate. The phosphate ends are the phi prime ends and the sugar ends are the three prime ends. And this is gonna become more important when we get to things like DNA replication and protein synthesis. So to sum up what we've seen so far, DNA is double-stranded. Each of its nucleotides has a phosphate deoxyribose in these four bases, ATCG. The sugar and phosphate are held together by strong covalent bonds, whereas the bases are held together by weak bonds. There are two hydrogen bonds between A and T, three between C and G. And DNA strands are anti-parallel. One strand runs five prime phosphate to three prime sugar. The other strand runs three P prime sugar to five prime phosphate. A quick look at nitrogenous bases. You've probably already noticed that different bases have different structures. We're going to zoom in on that right now. So cytosine, thymine, and uracil have something in common. They're all made of just one ring. And because they're made of just one ring, they get a special name. They're called pyrimidines. However, A and G, adenine and guanine, are made up of two rings. And so they have a different name. They're known as purines. And the reason that certain bases are complementary is because pyrimidines always have to bond with purines so that the size of DNA is constant up and down the ladder. 
If you can think of an easy way to keep straight which bases are pyrimidines and purines, let me know. That'll definitely be worth some extra credit because it is hard to memorize the differences and you need to. Before we close out, we don't want to forget about RNA. RNA is the underdog of the nucleic acid world, but as we saw in evolution, RNA likely evolved first and it has some key properties. So let's compare RNA structure to DNA. First of all, the RNA nucleotide is a little bit different from the DNA nucleotide because RNA has the sugar ribose, whereas DNA has the sugar deoxyribose. And a deoxyribose just means that it's missing an oxygen right here. A second difference between the two is that uracil does not have the base T, thymine. It has the base U, uracil, instead. However, both uracil and thymine are pyrimidines, so that keeps the structure of DNA constant. And the final and most obvious difference is that RNA is single-stranded, whereas DNA is made up of two strands held together by hydrogen bonds. And that concludes our exploration of nucleic acid structure. Please make sure your notes have all of these important aspects, and don't forget to take the poll.